I'm a pretty big fan and user of flat packs. They just tend to work really well for me out of the three universal package formats. App images are good and I do use them as well. But there's just something about Flatpak. I really like the fact that flathub.org is out there and it's a central repository. I can keep things up to date versus app images, which aren't really as easy. So that said, with Flatpaks, I've had a couple issues. One in particular, the biggest one, is that sometimes the permissions of the sandboxing for Flatpaks is really restrictive. In particular, access to the file system. I've run into a couple situations where I'll be using a flat pack that I've installed from Flathub and the default permissions I wasn't aware are restrictive enough that I don't have access to the file system to be able to save a file. So one instance that comes to mind is I was using Mumble. I was using it as the back chat for a podcast I was recording and you can record in Mumble. I was using that as a fallback. So that in case anything happened to the local audio on both ends, you always have that. I was using the flat pack of Mumble. I started recording. I recorded almost two hours of audio. I saved the file. When I was saving, I realized, oh, I don't have access to my file system, but it appears as though I can save this file in the sandbox itself. So I did that. And then I couldn't find the file. And I thought this is really odd and was trying to find an answer. And really, I just could not figure out a way to get to that file. I searched the file system and unless I'm doing something completely wrong or misunderstanding, essentially those files are destroyed or not actually saved. If anyone knows the answer to this and I'm just doing something wrong, please feel free to inform me and educate me what happened in that case. And what has happened since then in another application, XMind in particular, let's see if I pull up XMind and I'll, I'll demonstrate the, the problem so you can see it. So I'll create a new map in here and this is a mind mapping software. And I had spent eh, maybe a good hour putting together some topics. And if you've used the mind mapping software before you, you know that you're putting real thought into this. You're sort of doing like a brain dump. So I put all this together and then I go to save it. And I realize, oh, that's right. I don't actually have access to the file system. So this file system you're seeing here is, is I'm going to say virtualized, but I know that's not the right term. It's, it's sandboxed, I guess is the best term. You can see that the, the dates on these are just a few seconds ago or a few minutes, um, you know, less than a minute ago. So these are obviously being created on the fly when the application runs. That's why I was saying virtualized again, maybe not the right term. So it appears as though, Hey, maybe I can get in here and save this. And so I'll save this just as something that should be really easy to find, you know, find me.xmine. Now I'll look at this path and I'll go ahead and open that in my file system. Just, just in case I'm, I'm getting this wrong. So var app net.xmind data app xmind, right? Okay, so that's the directory. So I go ahead and save that. And you'll notice that there's nothing here. That file doesn't actually exist. But if I come back and say save as again, it says that it's actually there. Now, what happens is if I think that that file is somewhere I can get to and I close this and then realize, oh, I can't actually get to that file because it doesn't exist. And this is, again, just probably my misunderstanding of how sandboxing works. And I, I know the intention is that it's cordoned off from the system and the whole point of sandboxing is security and, and separation from the underlying system. But why, why would you have an application where you can do work like you can in XMind or Mumble where you can save files and record things and not have access to the file system to actually save it? If I had just spent that time that I was demonstrating that doing actual work and lost it, I'd probably be pretty upset. And I was <laughs> upset. 
when I figured that out. You can override these permissions and set them so that they have access to things uh, like the file system. And there's a bunch of different permissions you can set. The one that I'm most interested in is file system access. Now I can do that manually through the command line. So if I come in here and say flat pack override, now I have to say user because I'm installing flat packs as a user repository instead of the system level. If you're doing system level, you may have to use, you wouldn't denote user, you would just omit that part. In my case, I need that. Okay. And then I need, well, first I need the flat pack name. So let me list. All right. And I need this. And copy it. I'm going to do flat pack override. Again, I need user, the application name, and then the override I'm trying to set. Now, you can do host level, which a lot of flat packs actually have by default, and that would be access to your full file system, which if you're trying to keep your system, you know, sandboxed and and make it so that the flat packs actually can't get to the file system, then that's maybe not the best choice. So let's say that I just really want to get, have it be my home directory, right? Because, yeah, I mean, that's still maybe not as safe as no access, but it's probably more safe than, uh, you know, than your whole system. Okay, so I do that. And now if I come into XMind and I create a new map and I, oops, go to save this and I go to my folder. Now I actually have access to my home folder. And if I save that central topic in here and I come back to my home directory, there it is, right? So that's at a minimum what I'm going to need out of any application that has the ability to create a file that I'm going to want to save at some point. All right, great. So we can do these overrides in the terminal. That's great. I mean, it's good that we have the option. It's terrible that we don't know until we make a mistake and learn the hard way. But something else that I've found recently that is really, really interesting, and I realize I have to watch this, it's a brand new project called Flat Seal. There has been some coverage. I've seen a few articles on it. This is really, really slick. So it's a graphical utility to review and modify basic permissions for Flatpak applications. And so it's, it's essentially all these permissions exposed in a UI that makes it really easy to manage. So if I fire up Flat Seal here, it shows me all of the Flatpaks I have installed and then the permissions that are assigned to any one of them. And so it's giving me a really nice view of all of the possible sandbox permissions that I can set and change. So if I look at something like color picker, it doesn't have access to the file system. That's fine. There's nothing in here that I'm actually going to save. It saves its own colors internally, and it is persistent when it comes to storing those values, but I don't need to export anything out to the file system. So fine, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, here's GIMP. So GIMP has access to all system files. So whenever you're in GIMP under Flatpak and you go to save something or open something, you have access to those files. If we look at Xmine, it's going to have access to my home, but that's because I had just done this manually. If I was just installing this from Flathub, that permission was not set. And so you saw when I initially went into Xmine, I couldn't save that file or it looked as though I saved it and it didn't actually save. So this is reading those permissions from Flatpak itself. And then again, giving you a really simple way to come in and look at the permissions that any given Flatpak has and let you set them and override them. So the nice thing about this to me, other than just being a friendly UI that you can use, is it's a really quick and simple way to just review, number one, what's installed on your system in a collective way. And then again, just being able to quickly review permissions so that let's say I am trying a new piece of software I haven't before. Now that I know that this is a potential issue, I check every time, but you know, people 
people are going to find this the hard way, right? Like I said, they're going to discover that this is a problem when it's too late and there's literally nothing they can do. They've spent hours doing something potentially and lose that information. So I, I really, I didn't want to be negative in this video and I hope that I didn't come off that way. Flatpak is amazing. For me, at least it's made running any distribution painless because no matter if it's a long-term release, a fixed release, uh, even rolling releases like Arch, I'll run Flatpak because there are just some Flatpaks that are the best version of that software for me. So I am, a, like I said, a huge proponent and fan of Flatpaks. I think they do a great job. This is just one of those things that maybe everyone else knows and I don't. And maybe you watch this and you go, well, duh, of course it, it behaves that way. What did you expect? If that's the case, then chalk it up to my ignorance and not understanding how this is supposed to work. If you weren't aware of this, uh, hopefully this will stop this from happening to you. If you find something like Flat Seal appealing to be able to come in and look at these permissions, then I will have a link to it in the description so that you can check it out. And I'll also link to the, uh, the article on the sandbox permissions as well, and also this uh, command that I ran. So that's it. Hope this was helpful to you, like I said, and saves you some, uh, some trouble. And with that, I'll say thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Take care.